Now I'll press copy. Now on the next image, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say paste edit settings. We're basically batch processing even a portrait or wedding scenario here, right here in Adobe Camera Raw. This update, like I said, even seemingly small, is huge from a workflow perspective. Yesterday, Adobe Camera Raw was updated to 14.4 and this release is huge. Actually, it's little, but it's very big. It's kind of like my five-year-old. He's a tiny little thing, but he's got huge personality. The first one there is a raw egg. And that's exactly what's happening in this new update of Adobe Camera Raw. At first glance, it doesn't look like it's that big of an update, but let's take a walk through here and I think you're gonna be just as excited about this as I am. Let's go ahead and dive in. We're primarily going to be talking about the masking tools because that's where the features got a really big change. So let's start with this image here. I'm gonna go into the masking section. I already have my basic settings done on this image. Um, in the past, if I made a sky selection, that sky selection would only be for the image that I had it on. Then if I wanted to use that same preset with that sky on another image, it would have to, it would apply it, but then I'd have to press a button that would update the mask. Well, things just got really interesting here, folks. Check this out. I'm gonna go to select sky. Once I make my sky selection, I'm gonna show you something really cool that they also did with this with the inversion of the mask. So I made my sky selection. I'm gonna go ahead and modify this a little bit. I'm gonna make that sky a little bit more on the blue side. I might even increase that exposure a little bit, make it a little bit brighter. Maybe pop up those highlights a little bit and drop those shadows and make this just a little bit more of a punchy sky. Maybe even add a little bit more saturation to this. So you're gonna see here, I've got this sky selection. So I've got that sky selected, but obviously now that the sky has a little bit more punchiness to it, we need to do something to the foreground. Well, in the past, what I would do here is I would duplicate this mask and then I would invert that duplicated mask. Well, Adobe got really smart and they put this thing in here called duplicate and invert mask as if they knew that that's what all of us were doing anyway. So when I press the duplicate and invert mask button, it automatically gives me a foreground selection. Now there is no select foreground, but this is essentially the same thing as selecting the foreground. So now with this mask, I'm going to go ahead and pump up my exposure a little bit, maybe give this a little bit more yellow color to it, maybe even a little bit more green. So I made the sky a little bit more blue, made the foreground a little bit more green and yellow, which is typically what I do anyway in my images, specifically because we're only white balancing for one thing at a time when we take a picture, and it's either gonna white balance for the sky or it's gonna white balance for the foreground, and then something's gonna lose something. So this is a great feature because watch what happens now. If I right click on this image and I say, copy selected edit settings. Once I go in there, I don't wanna copy everything from this image to be used on the other one. I just wanna copy the masks. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna press the Alt key and click on masking. So that's gonna copy all of the stuff that I just did with these two masks. Now I'm gonna go onto this image, right click and say paste edit settings. It's gonna say, hey, hold on a second. We need to update this AI mask for you. It's basically doing that update AI mask automatically for us so we don't have to do any of the guesswork. Now, it's not going to look exactly the same as the image before, and the reason why is because I didn't do anything to my uh, basic settings. So let me just press auto on this and see how it looks. That's pretty good because that's pretty much the same thing I did here, and now we have two images that match each other. So this is great. Let's say we've got a whole series of landscape photographs that we're working on, all from about the same time frame, all with about the same composition, but a different sky and a different foreground because of the way we frame the image. We could just do all the work on one image and then copy all those settings to the next image and it's automatically done. That's phenomenal. Like I said, this is a huge update, but it's also a very small one. It's small because it feels like something we should have had the whole time, but it's big because of what it affords us in our workflow. Now, it doesn't just stop there. This also works for selecting subjects. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image right here. Oh, this lovely couple. It looks like he's about to kiss her teeth, and that's just kind of weird. Anyway, I showed you select sky. Now, this also works for select subject. Now, in this unique situation, I'm also going to show you something else with this that's also pretty awesome. So I'm going to go to masking, and I'm going to go to select subject. Now, it's automatically going to do its AI processing and make the subject selected. Now, this selection looks great, except for the fact that I want to do something that's going to separate the foreground, which is them, from the background, and it didn't get my uh, bouquet here. So I need to add something to that selection. So I'm going to press Add, and I'm going to go to Brush. 
Now when I brush in here, I'm gonna brush in all of this bouquet, but I'm actually gonna say show overlay so I know exactly what I'm brushing in. I've got auto mask selected, so it's gonna do a, a favor for me on this side of the image, but it's not on the interior, so that's okay. Um, there we go, Oop, control. Let me go ahead and press Alt or Option and then just hit that a little bit on the outside so that we don't get that selection in there. That's gonna erase that area there. Maybe I'll turn auto mask off for this one. It doesn't have to be perfect in this case. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and with auto mask off to start painting in this area here to make sure that we get everything inside this area. Now there is a gap in between them right there, so that's okay. This is the selection for my foreground. So let's say I wanna brighten them up a little bit and then maybe come in here and drop those highlights a little bit so they aren't blown out. Uh, and then maybe I'll add a little bit of temperature boost to them to make their skin tones a little bit more natural and then a little bit more uh, on the magenta to make that a little bit more natural. OK, so here is our before here. OK, now one of the things that I want you to realize here is that uh, before we couldn't invert the top layer mask. OK, so before this update, if I had several masks inside this one big mask here, so several selections inside this one mask, it wouldn't invert on the top layer. I would essentially have to go in and invert both of them and sometimes it wouldn't work appropriately. Now, I have an invert mask selection here. If I press this, it's going to invert it and it's the combination of all the selections that are happening inside this mask, which is great. It's basically like inverting a folder uh, of all the stuff that's inside of it. So let me go ahead and invert that back. Okay, so I've got the foreground. Here's a cool part with this as well. If we press duplicate and invert mask it's going to select the background and not have the bouquet or the couple involved in there as small as this sounds like i said this is huge for this update so let me click on my background maybe so i made the foreground i made them a little bit warmer let me do something here and make that make the background a little bit cooler so it'll push away the background and pull them forward so with this mask inverted here i'm just going to go ahead and make the background just a little bit cooler that'll push that behind and also calm us down a little bit that's kind of what blue does from a color theory perspective and maybe i'll make that a little bit darker behind them okay and it doesn't stop there just like i copied these settings to this image, we can do the same thing with the select subject. So I'm going to right click on this image, copy selected edit settings. And what do I want to copy? I just want to copy the masking. So I'm going to press alt or option and click on where it says masking. You have to make sure you press alt or option and click on that and then ensure that both of these are selected. Now I'll press copy. Now on the next image, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say paste edit settings. We're basically batch processing even a portrait or wedding scenario here, right here in Adobe Camera Raw. This update, like I said, even seemingly small, is huge from a workflow perspective. So now I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same thing. Does this work in a preset environment? Can we make a, an adaptive preset for this? Well, Adobe actually called them adaptive presets, and yes, we can. So if we go over to our preset section and we want to make a preset, let's say for this blue sky that we just did here, we can go ahead and say create preset, and then when we create this preset, if we Alt or Option click on the masking section here, this will essentially copy everything that we just did to this image over here. So let's call this test. Okay, test blue, bluey, blue sky. Okay, uh, it's gonna go into my user presets and I'll just press okay. So now if I go into my user presets here, I'm gonna go test blue sky. Now I'm doing this, we already did all this stuff on this image, right? But watch what happens here. We get a slider up here now so we can reduce how much that blue sky comes in or increase it. This little feature is pretty cool because what it's doing is it's increasing or decreasing the effect of both of those AI masks at the exact same time. Because some images we might need a lot of that and other ones we might not need quite as much. So if you're editing your images, instead of going into right clicking, copy settings, paste settings, you can actually make a preset of that and use it on any image thereafter. If I click on this image, test that blue sky, looks good because that's how it was already. We already know that because that's what we put into the preset, but increase it and decrease it. And look at that, that's phenomenal. Wow. I know a lot of you give Adobe a hard time for some reason or another, but I think they're making some incredible advancements in their software and they're doing it for us very quickly. Matt Klaskowski and I were talking about this possibility as soon as they released the masking feature. We were thinking, man, it'd be great if there was a select foreground. Well, now they've done it for us. We didn't think it was gonna happen until later this year and it's happening very quickly. Kudos Adobe, you've done a great job.
Thank you for taking the time to watch this. If you like this tutorial, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today. In my preparation, I had a picture of a pretty bird in there. I didn't end up needing it. But you can use this on wildlife photos as well.